For centuries, we've watched the moon, a silent, unchanging world. But for just as long, observers have reported something strange, unexplained flashes of light on its surface. They were dismissed as optical illusions. Until now, new data confirms these mysterious bursts are real, and they're challenging everything we thought we knew. What's causing these flashes? And what secrets do they reveal about a world we thought was dead? The answer could rewrite history. Something on the moon is misbehaving. It isn't a spacecraft, isn't astronauts, and isn't just a trick of Earth's atmosphere. Across years of observation, scientists have tracked strange, unexplained bursts of light happening directly on the lunar surface. The technical term is transient lunar phenomena. And while they sound subtle, they could reveal ongoing activity inside the moon itself. Today, we'll unpack why these flashes matter, what causes are still on the table, and how upcoming robotic missions are planning to test this curiosity head-on. A history of strange lunar flashes, reports of sudden flashes on the moon, go back centuries, long before photography or spaceflight could verify them. Some of the earliest claims date to the late 1500s, when telescopes were new and observers were sketching what they thought were sparks or faint glimmers on the lunar surface. The records are patchy, but the suggestion was always the same. Something brief and luminous had appeared in an otherwise dark and still landscape. For people who believed the moon was a static world, even a hint of movement was startling. As telescopes improved in the 1600s and 1700s, reports became more frequent. Amateur and professional astronomers described glowing points, pale flashes, or hazy clouds on the lunar disk. Sometimes these sightings came during an eclipse, when portions of the moon were shaded and easier to watch for changes. Other times they were recorded during ordinary nights, when the high contrast between crater rims and shadows could play tricks on tired eyes. The problem was that no two reports matched perfectly. One person saw a sudden burst near a crater, while another insisted on a lingering glow in a flat plain. That uneven record left experts divided. Some thought the moon might still host volcanic eruptions, with molten rock releasing light. Others proposed that meteors striking at high speed could create sparks bright enough to see from Earth. And many argued these were nothing more than optical illusions, exaggerated by turbulence in Earth's atmosphere. In plain terms, the situation was like watching lightning through fog. There might have been a real flash, but distortions made its size, location, and even its existence uncertain. For every report that seemed plausible, others appeared to dissolve under repeat observation. As debates continued into the 19th century, even prominent figures weighed in with competing views. Some trusted their observations enough to publish detailed drawings, convinced the moon still had energy beneath its crust. Others dismissed the entire subject as unreliable. The consensus view that eventually formed was cautious. Most of the accounts were considered anecdotal, shaped more by human perception than by lunar reality. Without photographs as proof, scientists had no method to separate genuine events from mistakes. That situation finally changed in the modern era. In the second half of the 20th century, sensitive cameras aimed at the moon began to catch abrupt flashes of light. Unlike the older reports, these images provided clear timings and locations. They showed that at least some of the mysterious events were real and measurable. They happened rarely, but they did happen. If those confirmed flashes exist, they force a new question. Something is producing brief bursts of light on a world long thought to be geologically dead. The idea is no longer myth or misperception. It is a phenomenon worth serious investigation. And if it is real, the next step is to look at what physical processes might still be active beneath the surface, waiting for the right moment to reveal themselves. Possible explanations beneath the regolith. The moon is usually described as geologically quiet. It lacks the shifting plates, active volcanoes, and roaring atmosphere that make Earth dynamic. But if sudden bursts of light are visible from Earth, it forces us to ask why. These flashes suggest 
that something about the moon is not as inactive as many textbooks still portray. To make sense of it, scientists set out a few main hypotheses that could explain short-lived brightness on the lunar surface. The three that receive the most attention are meteoroid impacts, gas release, and electrostatic activity near the surface. The most widely accepted explanation is impacts. Meteoroids, which are space rocks the size of pebbles or boulders, collide with the moon all the time. Without air to slow them down, they slam into the ground at tens of thousands of kilometers per hour. The energy from that collision can heat and vaporize lunar rock almost instantly, producing a flare visible across the void. Automated monitoring projects have photographed many impact flashes over the last two decades, showing that this process is real and frequent. The flashes usually last less than a second, which matches expectations for high-speed impacts. Even with this clear evidence, some observed events do not match the quick, sharp profile of an impact. Several reports describe light that lasted minutes, or that appeared in exactly the same location more than once. An impact site cannot repeat. Once a meteoroid strikes, the surface is permanently changed. That is where other working hypotheses come in. Researchers have suggested that subsurface gases may escape under the right conditions. In this view, ancient pockets of volatile elements, such as radon, trapped beneath the regolith, could seep upward. Exposure to sunlight or contact with electrically charged dust might generate a faint visible glow. Evidence for this comes indirectly from the Apollo missions. During the years astronauts left instruments on the surface, seismometers picked up small moonquakes. Most of these events were weak, but they showed that the crust is not completely still. A subtle quake could shift rock layers enough to liberate stored gas and push it toward the surface. If gas escapes with force, it could lift dust or produce a faint glimmer that looks like a flash from Earth. Certain areas, especially around Aristarchus Crater, appear in historical accounts more often than random chance would suggest. Aristarchus also stands out for its bright surface and unusual geology, making it a reasonable candidate for local activity. Another idea considers the role of electrostatic activity. On the Moon, dust grains can become electrically charged by solar radiation. Under certain conditions, those grains may move or even discharge light as tiny sparks. The hypothesis remains uncertain, but if it contributes, it would add to the picture of a moon with subtle, ongoing dynamics. The key takeaway is that while meteoroid impacts remain the leading cause, data leaves space for additional processes. If gases or electrostatic activity are involved, the moon cannot be called fully dead. To address this debate with stronger evidence, scientists have turned to new observing techniques and missions now being planned. How we aim to solve the mystery. For most of history, the odd flashes on the moon were spotted only by chance. Someone looking through a telescope might see one, note it in a log, and then wait years for another. Today, the situation looks very different. The investigation has become systematic, and researchers now use dedicated networks of telescopes and spacecraft to record and confirm these events. For the first time, it is possible to test whether the lights come from meteoroid impacts, gas release, or some other form of activity. Several universities, often working together with experienced amateur astronomers, run continuous lunar monitoring programs. These projects use automated telescopes pointed at the moon for long stretches of time, capturing thousands of images each night. When a sudden burst of light appears on a frame, the system timestamps it, compares it with other observations, and determines whether it represents a genuine, transient lunar phenomenon. Having multiple telescopes watch the same area from different locations is key. If two instruments capture the same flash at the same instant, researchers know that it was not caused by turbulence in Earth's atmosphere or by a camera glitch. Alongside ground-based work, orbiting spacecraft have become essential. NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, flying around the Moon since 2009, can photograph the surface at high resolution and locate fresh craters. Similarly, India's Chandrayaan-2 orbiter 
carries instruments designed to scan for surface changes. These satellites give researchers the ability to check whether a flash recorded from Earth corresponds to a brand new impact site on the ground. When the two lines of data match, a strong case can be made that a meteoroid caused the light. But even with these advanced tools, several problems remain. A key challenge is timing. The flashes are unpredictable and brief. A telescope on Earth may record a light in real time, but a satellite orbiting the Moon cannot always turn and capture the immediate aftermath. By the time an orbiter revisits the location, dust may have settled or the evidence may be difficult to see. This gap leaves room for uncertainty, especially for events that do not fit the sharp signature of an impact. To close this gap, space agencies plan to send new robotic craft carrying instruments specifically designed for on-site monitoring. The Artemis program, which aims to return humans to the moon, is supported by a series of smaller robotic deliveries under the Commercial Lunar Payload Services Initiative. Some of these payloads will carry seismometers, cameras, and spectrometers that can provide continuous measurements. The European Space Agency has also outlined potential instruments to monitor gases and surface changes directly. A particularly promising idea is to deploy sensors that can listen for moonquakes, track dust movement, and measure light events as they happen on the ground. With these coordinated efforts, Earth-based monitoring, orbital imaging, and surface instruments may finally work together. Researchers could not only watch a flash in real time, but also verify its effect on the surface within hours. This integrated approach places us near the point of resolving whether lunar flashes are mostly impacts, occasional gas releases, or another process yet to be confirmed. And the answer will matter for more than science alone, because what these flashes reveal connects directly to plans for building a sustained human presence on the Moon. Conclusion The Moon continues to remind us it is not fully understood. Those brief flashes, often seen as faint sparks against the dark surface, signal that even nearby worlds can hold active mysteries. They are small events, yet meaningful for what they suggest about processes still unfolding today. Future missions give us a chance to study them more closely. Orbital cameras, lander instruments, and seismic sensors may confirm which explanation fits best. Following these missions matters because the answers will shape how we view the Moon, not just as a destination, but as a place where humanity may someday live and work.